Infection, Part 1 Here in this capital metropolis of Tokyo, where connections with 23 other worlds have been formed, will countless spirits of unknown origin. Factions clash with one another over their own interests, and spies and agents abound, creating additional pockets of conflict in even the remotest corners of the city. Even tonight, at this hour, there is sure to be such struggles unfolding somewhere. All of you can just hold it right there. Did you think you escaped my notice? Let it be known. You only roam free because I've allowed it. The intruders, startled by Sandayu's sudden proclamation, frantically call for backup from their comrades in the area, but there seemed to be no response. I'm afraid it's no use trying to communicate with your friends. They've already been dealt with. I guess you could say breaking up intelligence networks is a specialty of mine, and you lot are the last ones standing. Dear me, though. There are always so many of you. Night after night. It's enough to make one gray before their time. So many fashions, both legitimate and clandestine, have sent pawns just like you to look into Arathin. Well, out with it then. Who do you work for? What fashions do you represent? There's no sense hiding it anymore. The way you carry yourself suggests that you too are agents. The question is... Are you active members, or have you accepted a bribe? Whoa now, let's keep the desperation attacks to a minimum, shall we? The last batch tried the same thing. I do understand, though. Separated from your companions and driven by anxiety, unable to fully grasp the situation you're in. So, tell me, why do you think I've chosen to reveal myself to you like this? Do you have any ideas? As the intruders focus their attention on Sandayu, an arm rises behind them like an unseen specter. Well, you know what they say. Focus on what's in front of you too hard, and you'll likely miss what's right behind you. Sandayu lectures the bodies of his defeated foes as he reattaches the severed arm. That was invisible range the entire time, but okay. Oh my, what a mess. This hall is going to need a thorough cleaning. Looks like I'll be working over time tonight. The one thing that separates true professionals from those who only claim the title is the ability to successfully eliminate all traces of evidence from the scene of an incident. Such as, for example, cleaning up after mortal combat in the halls of a school building, night after night, to the extent that no one is any the wiser anything occurred there at all. And this night would be no different. No one would ever be able to tell these agents were disposed of here, unless, of course, someone wanted it known. Hey, did you hear? They say there's a ghost haunting Shinjuku Academy. A friend of mine who returned to school late at night to pick something she forgot said she saw a strange shadow. But when she went to see what it was, there was nothing there at all. Isn't that spooky? Sully rumors are all it amounts to. With no evidence to back up any of the claims of supernatural encounters, these alleged ghost sightings seem destined to become urban legends at best. I wonder if it has anything to do with that teacher who disappeared not too long ago. I heard most of the other teachers are acting like he was never there in the first place. You know, I'm starting to get scared of attending classes at Shinjuku Academy. Uh, I th think I could request to be transferred. It's not just Shinjuku too, though. This golden kabuki show has been seeing crazy things happening lately too. I read on that that a famous student model there, E, has been trying to get people she doesn't like expelled. For real? Wait, a famous student model known only as E. Do you think it's her? The queen of kabuki show. Nah, that sucks. 
I had no idea she was that kind of person to do something so crappy. I was a fan of hers, too. And all it takes to change your mind is some idle gossip on the net? Ah, huh, some fan. Besides, I heard differently. My friends are saying things are really bad in Asakusa, too. Apparently their pep squad captain went berserk or something. Yeah, like randomly attacking other people, right? Man, why haven't the police gotten involved if things are that bad? Because there's no point. This world's about to win. Trust me, I know the truth. The end is nigh. Oh boy, we got a live one here. You doomsday prophets are all hoot, you know that? Real grade A nonsense. Well, to be fair, rumors like these have been circulating more than ever lately. It does make you wonder. And so, rumors and stories circulate throughout Tokyo, each originating from an unseen source and spreading far and wide. Good morning, Mr. Sandu. Yo, teach! Good morning! The students, now familiar with Mr. Sandyu, greet him warmly as a new school day begins. Oh ho, good morning everyone! Did you walk together? What good friends you are! Ah, uh, actually we came together for safety, cause we heard some scary rumors and were too afraid to be alone. There's one about a ghost story or another about some random acts of violence. Have you heard them too? Are they true? Ah, I see, I see. Well, not to worry. If anything should happen, I'll be sure to keep you safe. Thanks, Teach. We knew we could count on you. How nice it feels to be loved by one student. Please, put all those worries out of your mind. Sandyu's got your back. As it happens, this was by no means an isolated incident. With the rumors flying about throughout Tokyo, students have been commuting to school in groups everywhere. Their unease and anxiety are plainly painted on their faces in all corners of the city. Yo, Mr. Sandyu. Good morning. Well, good morning to you. Hmm? This is rare. Are you alone today, Ayrton? Uh, yeah, I came here by myself. My friends are already in the classroom. Let me ask. Yeah! <laughs> You are a cheeky one, aren't you? You aren't scared, anxious, at ease. There's no shame if you are. Sandyu grabs your shoulder and pulls you in close. Hey, is there anything bothering you at all? You know, you can talk to me about it if there is. I'm here for you. Uh, sorry, no, I'm fine. Personal space much, Mr. Sandyu. The only thing bothering me is you. Well, hot and bothered, sure. After school, you and your guildmates gather in the summoner's safe house for a meeting. Alright, let's get started. Though, I'm sad to say, I've got nothing whatsoever to report, personally. Zero leads. These intel meetings are a regular occurrence within the summoners to ensure that any data any member was able to gather is disseminated among the guild as a whole. Nothing at all, huh? That's interesting. It is surprising, with all these rumors flying around. But every single one of them is unsubstantiated. They're all dead ends. And any actual intel is getting lost in the shuffle. I've uncovered absolutely nothing of note about the invaders. So, I thought perhaps we should use this opportunity to take a step back and reevaluate our situation. So, we are in search of Mr. Mononobe's scattered memories, per our guildmaster's direction. I fear to believe Mr. Mononobe's words. His memories have been divided into two-thirds and stored in memory units. And it's the Guildmaster of the Three True Guilds who are tasked with holding on to th those units. So our goal here seems clear. We need to determine the identities of these Guildmasters and locate them. For further details, I suggest we consult with... Well, take a wild guess. Do. Bingo! He's both qualified and deeply involved, and finally willing to talk, it seems. Right? Or is it his brother? Uh, Shuichi. Chiro flashes Moritaka a quick sidelong glance. Oh, I'm completely wrong. 
I have been informed that they're ready to join the meeting on Shuichi on th Oh, never mind, I'm right. Any uh, Shuichi. But he's willing to talk now? Did he reach out to us? Well, Suichi and his brother were once considered to take up the mantle of Guildmaster within the Shichu Guilds. Just a moment. I'm placing the call. Hello. R19. Suichi. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Greetings to you, Marie Taka, Shiro, and the rest of the summoners. I am, at present, analyzing the previous Battle of Stato while under the Ikebukuro Guild's protection. I've undered quite a lot of valuable information, more than I can handle on my own, as it happens. If the soft lace and bowl are being tracked by Bathim and Ikutoshi, respectively. As I'm certain Shira must have mentioned, the true guild and control of the West has been concealing its movements. Meanwhile, the Ikebukuro guild has been recovering its combat readiness, securing portals, and gathering intel. Concerning how dangerous it has become for me to be alone, I rented some space with them for the time being. That's all neither here nor there, however. The topic for today is the child prodigy guildmasters of the three true guilds. Whom I know quite a lot about. I was raised alongside them in the same research institution. Now, what I'm about to tell you, I do not divulge lightly. But it's important that you hear this. So, R19. Would you please send the 3D data I prepared to their monitor? R19, the glorified TV. Infection, part two. Now, let's get started then. I think the best place to begin is with myself. Or rather, the origins of my brother and me. We were two specimens among others, born in a certain lab on the city's east side. We were part of a project to create child prodigies artificially. <laughs> I'm sure you already have a lot of ethical concerns, but let's keep this story moving. This project produced a number of failures, and unfortunately, I was one of them. I may act intelligent on the surface, but when it comes down to it, I couldn't keep up with the real prodigies at all. There was no place in the lab for failures like me, someone whose mind couldn't even comprehend 10% of what the other kids talked about. So, I escaped along with my little brother before the powers that be sought fit to throw me in the refuse bin. And this was before I joined the same dojo you attend, Moritaka. I wanted to become stronger so I could protect my dear brother. But I digress, so let's get back to the main topic, shall we? Where there are failures, there are also successes. And there were three major successes. I believe you've met one of them. The boy who replaced the majority of his body with machine parts? He calls himself Bursho, and is one of the prodigies. Though when I knew him, he went by a different name. There was a fourth major success as well. My dear brother. Though, frustratingly, he was designated as a reserve, a backup. I trust that, by now, you have some notion of where all of this is going. The three to whom my brother serves as backup are those assigned to be the Game Masters, who manage the progress of this game. They were then appointed as Guild Masters of the three true guilds, with many world representatives distributed among them. The three true guilds, of course, being the warmongers to the west, rule makers to the east, and invaders to the south. But unlike the world representatives, their goal has never been to bring the game to a close by winning. Rather, they each seek to actualize their own theories, plans A, B, and C, through the continuance of the game. Therefore, they more or less observe the game from on high as record keepers of sorts, and with Data their primary motivator, amicability toward the players of the game is not guaranteed. Their theories... Fans A, B, and C... What does that mean exactly? Ah, the theories. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd ask about them. 
I doubt you'd understand, but let me break them down for you. Plan C believes that the answer is tutelage, for the sake of the betterment of mankind. So this should be current by process of elimination among the rule makers. I don't think they've ever mentioned tutelage was their philosophy before, but it's good to know now. Plan B, on the other hand, believes the solution is competition, while Plan A promotes union, or rather, assimilation. Plan B referring to Berger or Robert, who is of the warmongers, and Plan A, of course, being with Isaac, part of the invaders. So those two, we already know. Bertro is a representative of Plan B, though from what I understand, he had surpassed the limits of his mind and body. I would ask that you not request any further explanation right now, as the present goal is simply disseminating relevant intel. And the most relevant intel I can give you is in regards to the child prodigy who leads the invaders. He is the golden child, the most successful of the three prodigies by a very wide margin and the Herald of Plan A. His name is Isaac, known as a revolutionary prodigy even among geniuses. His potential was off the charts. It was as if he could see the future at all times. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if he's been able to effortlessly work out what lies beyond this game. He could see the future and know what'll happen at the end of the game? In theory, yes. Alter calculation. It's as if there's nothing he doesn't know. Though I do suspect my dear brother will reach his level one day as well, of course. Though from what I've been able to determine after escape, Isaac has chosen to stay out of the spotlight, so to speak. Even when my brother was still with the wise men, we were unable to get any handle on his movements whatsoever. We tried to gather as much intel on him as we could, but all we wound up with was white noise. Nothing but irrelevant junk data. Much of which we put stock in and tried following up on, but that only ever brought us trouble. So he's basically an unknown X-Factor? Nothing but irrelevant junk data, huh? Sounds like what we're finding now. Now, the warmongers of the West are known for their grandiose battle tactics, so they were not difficult to follow. But the invaders of the South are a different story. That guild's actions are perpetually shrouded in mystery. Even in their fight against the warmongers, only a small number of their leaders made themselves known, and their frontline troops were never seen at all. As a leader of an allied guild, I tell you this in all good faith if you are to stand against the invaders moving forward. Be prepared. The enemy could be anywhere, and you may never get so much as a single glimpse of her face. It's modern warfare. I see. Modern warfare, especially urban warfare, centers around disrupting the flow of information to divide the enemy ranks. It's about infiltration, sowing the seeds of doubt from within. This causes those who once worked together to isolate themselves and start to see enemies all around them. When paranoia sets in, even the staunchest ally seems suspicious, and infighting ensues. Even more effective is when the infiltrator takes a monitoring or guiding role within the target organization. Do you, perhaps, recall any times you've suddenly realized the enemy is right by your side and you didn't even know it? Clearing... Kyoma Momononobe, your teacher, mentor, and guardian, was one of the game's organizers as well. He was monitoring you this whole time. That is an indisputable fact, no? A man you thought was protecting you, someone you allowed to get closer than anyone else, was, in fact, your enemy. You won't deny this truth, I trust. I must say, it would be hard to maintain a worthwhile alliance with those who would. Shuichi, I've already brought it to their attention. Don't worry, Shuichi. I do understand. Shiro did tell us the same thing. 
Although he did phrase it a lot more gently. Yes, I figured the astute Shiro Motori must have already prepared you for this possibility. But there is more to be said, which I believe I am in a particularly unique position to talk about. You must understand that it's impossible to say there aren't other spies in your midst. Simply put, there may still be those among you selling information to your enemies. There may even be those among you who are not yet enemies now, but stand to become enemies in the future. What are your thoughts on that as Guildmaster? Given that I'm allied with you, our goal being a common one, I'd like to know. Looking around at the members of the Summoners, he sees clear signs of anger, confusion, and unease. So, what's it to be? Knowing all this, are you still prepared to face what awaits you? Even if it means traversing a road that separates you from those you care about. Could you perhaps be referring to your own brother, for example? I suppose I could. He would be the perfect example of what I mean. Shuichi appears lost in thought for a moment, thinking about his brother, who left his side after the battle with the Genociders. What do you think, then? Do you think you've been betrayed? <sighs> the thought had crossed my mind, yes. But if I'm being honest, I actually don't know. I believe I've made it clear that my brother is a genius far surpassing my own mental acuity. So when my brother decided to return to the East alone, I can honestly say that I didn't, and still don't, have the faintest idea why. He may have decided I was worthless of not being behind, or he may have left for my sake, somehow. Alright, then what will he do? What's your plan from here on out? I have no answer, and to pretend otherwise would be a fool's errand. I just don't know. But despite not knowing, I resolve to do whatever I can. There's as little sense worrying about a future that hasn't come to pass as there is dwelling in a past that I can't change. But I think I see what you're doing now. I see what you're trying to say. <laughs> well played! I want to talk to him one more time. I don't want to have the same regrets. Things just... Can't end like this. I suppose you're right. You really are in the same boat as me in many regards. For what it's worse, I would like to apologize to each and every one of you for my harsh tone earlier. But do take the pain it caused to heart, as the enemy will definitely try to poke and prod you even harder than that. That's all from me for now. Ah, Shiro. I shall get back to you and share my findings when my analysis is complete. I'm of course referring to the information Bathim and Ikutoshi gathered from the warmongers. Hmm. Communication relay complete. Call disconnected. Query. Is Shuichi alright? I'm fine. I just get a bit emotional whenever my dear brother comes up. When his brother left without him, Shuichi felt abandoned, doubting everything he thought he knew. These feelings of unease just grew within him over time. He indeed felt that he had been betrayed, despite having protected Duo so long and with all his heart. Thinking back to the last time he saw his brother, Shuichi tries to remember his face in the vain hope that maybe it might offer some clue as to his true intentions. This whole time, maybe, I was the one being protected. Yet I doubted him, if but for a moment. He probably carried that with him when he left. If so, my brother may still be hurting over that presumption. There's a part of me that still wants to believe he left for my sake. But I can't rest on those laurels, not while I'm in charge of the wise men. 
The wise learn from their past and never make the same mistake twice. Despite my position, I am not among the wise. R19, let's continue with the information analysis. Prioritize the intel from Bathium and Iktoshi. After giving his instructions to R19, Shuichi takes a moment to ponder. Perhaps if we can't effectively probe the invaders, someone else could. It's high time we studied the intel gathered from the officers of the Warmongers, a guild that stands toe to toe with the invaders. Mephistopheles of the Infernal Realm of Gehenna informed us of an, an identity split from his own, living here in Tokyo. Why had he presented us with this information through Bathim? To what end? And then there is the world representative of the Fairy Realm, Tyr Nanag, the Lord. Based on what we've learned, it seems he too clashed with the invaders. Okay, so I remember the Lord sort of cooperating with us, but. Uh, it, it, I, I'm only registering now that in the events of chapter 11, I guess Mephistopheles was also uh, helping us out. Well, not us directly, but they were helping do out, being cooperative with another guild for some reason. He has left the Warmonger since then, but the exact circumstances are unclear. Did he come to know something, perhaps? Ikutoshi Ooki of the Ikebukuru Guild was tendered that information by a certain transient. Lian and Chi. So now we have some idea of Balor's current situation. The transient is a member of the Akihabara creators. Perhaps they're the next best lead we've got. We may come to see some new information come to light. Maybe, if we're lucky. Oh, how I hate uncertainties. If my brother were to hear me say that, I'm certain he'd reprimand me for being so foolish once again. But of course, the little brother who would so freely insult and tease Shuichi is no longer at his side. And for all the world, Shuichi Togo just wants to see his brother once more. Shuichi vows to convey what he could not before, and to never repeat the same mistake again. Honestly, that's Shuichi. He needs to learn some tact. Yes, his social skills do leave a bit to be desired. But the things he has said are generally worth hearing, regardless of how he may present them. Where are you going, Arson? Oh, do we have a suspicion of him? Where'd she disappear to? That Elio sure is a wily one. Whoever tipped her off isn't going to get off easily. If you get your hands on that traitor, be sure to string him up. Ah, jeez, what a pain. Should I drain him of her blood? <laughs> nah, what am I saying? It would be a simple thing for Ellie to drink some of the blood of her pursuers, putting them under her command and putting them against each other. But Suzuka made it very clear that the people of Kabukicho should not be harmed. They are, after all, not the enemy. In fact, they're companions. Guildmates. Friends. There's a code of honor here in Kabukicho. One must always protect one's friends. So, what should I do? Just get out of dodge, like Suzuka suggested. That's not really a good option either, though. With how crazy the mobs have become, it stands to reason they'd take the anchor out on the person who helped Ellie get away. Things could easily get very violent, very quickly. Not only would that run counter to Suzuka's wish, but it would also sully Ellie's good name as the Queen of Kabukicho. <sighs> Being queen is sometimes a blessing, but often also a curse. No matter how much people count on you, you can't be seen counting on anyone else. No matter how much is requested of you, we must never be seen soliciting aid. So, this is where you've been hiding, Ellie. You're not getting away again. <sighs> Just as Ellie realizes there is nowhere left to run. <sighs> What's going on? The smoke! <clears throat> hey, it's Krusnik. 
Dear me, nightlife around here does get rather well, doesn't it? Come, Ellie, let us away. Hmm? Don't tell me you've forgotten the face of your homeroom teacher. Huh? Wait! Mr. Kresnik? Infection, part three. I hear there was another violent incident in Kabukicho. Things really have been getting out of control there recently, huh? Doesn't that count as domestic terrorism? It's really scary. What if things like that start happening in our school, too? <laughs> what, another incident? I swear, things have gotten so bad that I've had trouble getting to sleep for fear of closing my eyes. Doesn't seem like all the news lately ha has been bad. It's like somebody flipped the switch and everything went topsy-turvy. What's the world coming to? I can't take it anymore. It's just as you say. This Tokyo is doomed. The prophecy I've been taught is absolute. The city's fate cannot be averted. Oh great, it's the Shulker again. You know it's impossible to predict the future with 100% accuracy, right? Yeah, if you know the future that well, then tell us this week's weather. Oh, better yet, the winning lottery numbers. <laughs> Oh, wait, what? Tomorrow's stock prices? This has to be a trick. Fine, if they get, turn out to be right, I'll believe you. Um, isn't this the real deal? I mean, this isn't the kind of data you could just get right through chance. This is legit. I see there's this awesome prophet on the net who can tell you everything about the future. I know. They were talking about him in one of my group chats. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Wait, you haven't heard of him? Hey, they didn't catch the latest rumors. It seems these violent incidents are the work of people pretending to be both transients and Tokyo citizens. Hey, hey, did you see? Did you hear? It's just between you and me, but... Seems the invaders are working in action already. I'm Ellie. I'm a student at Kabukicho Academy, where all the ogres from around Kabukicho attend class. At least, that's what the school register says, probably. I'm not exactly proud of this fact, but I haven't really taken my studies very seriously or, you know, attended my classes. But, I mean, I'm a vampire. I'm stronger than any other student, or really any of the teachers for that matter. I used to be human too though, which is, I guess, why the other students and the teachers never really figured out exactly what to do with me. Whenever people can't figure out what something is, they just kind of walk away from it, scratching their heads. I've had to deal with that a lot since my transformation. It really brings me down, which is why I try to keep my distance from that school. But there was this one teacher who kept trying to counsel me, and give me guidance and stuff. Stuff like, children shouldn't walk alone at night. It's kind of funny, really, giving advice like that to a night walker. I have seen them around Kabukicho before here and there, reaching out to other students like me. What was that teacher's name again, though? No, I always forget. I think it was... Ah, yeah, that's right. Uh, what? Whoa! These aren't just your typical schoolgirls. All of them are ogres with a nasty reputation who used to stoke fears in the hearts of everyone in their respective homelands. Yet each and every one is effortlessly subdued without receiving a single scratch in the process. It's like an adult shaking off a horde of toddlers. Mm -hmm. The danger has been averted for the moment, though I must say, I am surprised by the lack of hesitation in their attacks. The teacher considers for a moment the fact that these students took up arms against Ellie, one of their own, with absolute conviction. And this is a worryingly unlikely thing to happen, with ramifications beyond the obvious dangers to life and limb. Ellie is someone they all know and respect, 
Yet these students attacked her with all their might, not hesitating for a moment. People have a natural tendency to doubt their actions, yet in this instance, it was as if every one of Ellie's attackers was utterly certain of their own righteousness. If only I could make my students believe in me as much as these attackers believed in their fight. <laughs> as it is, I can barely capture the attention of one student, let alone teach them a lesson. Picture a perfect classroom scene. Was me in front of the class? Ah, that's but a pipe dream. So, what's going on, Ellie? Have you forgotten the face of your homeroom teacher after all? Or are you simply so used to protecting others that you've forgotten what it's like to be protected yourself? You? Are you really? Mr. Kruznik? Are you alright? Ah, good good. I would have been quite devastated if you had actually forgotten who I was. Ah, look at that smile. If I may be frank, remembering your name isn't what I was concerned about. What I need to know is, where the hell did he learn those sick moves? <laughs> Ellie's been around in the fights in her time to recognize real scum when she sees it. And that was definitely it. Krizenik clearly had some field experience. But the Krizenik she knows is much more of a stick in mud. Ordinary teacher with a rather thin presence. And there aren't many in Kabukicho, let alone teachers, who can move like that. Or could it be that you're not just any ordinary teacher? No, no. I am, as you know me, a regular run-of-the-mill instructor who is perpetually made a fool by his students. Why, though? If you can pull off stunts like that, you should be able to easily deal with students who pick on you. Because I cannot abide ho ogres hurting ogres, none of the act nor even seeing it occur before in my eyes. If I must explain further, then I suppose you could say I do not wish to relive any past regrets. Now, come. We should make ourselves scarce. This place will not be safe for long, concerning the peculiar figures I've noticed among the students. Wait. Before we go, I'd like to know one more thing. Why do you save me? Krizenik stops his tracks, turns back to meet Ellie's gaze, and tries his best to earnestly answer her question. My reason for saving you. Hmm. What do you permit me to answer your question with a question of my own? Must the teacher have a particular reason to help one of his students in need? Ah, he's pretty cute in those different expressions. One day at Shinjuku Academy, after school, just before sunset. Well, he doesn't seem to be here. Not here either. Nope. Ugh, I can't find Mr. Sunday you anywhere. I'm beat. On the school roof, you lean back on a rusty fence only to hear a metallic creak and feel it snap. <laughs> huh? That would be a really shitty way to loop. <laughs> you reach out for whatever you can to save yourself, but with nothing to grab onto, you fall headfirst toward the ground. <laughs> no! Help! <laughs> Load panic and hold on to me, Arthur. <laughs> Mr. Sandu! It's a very long drop. <laughs> it's difficult to get a proper sense of what's happening in the moment, but you can distinctly feel the sensation of Mr. Sandu scooping you up midair. Immediately after doing so, he kicks off the school wall to keep from crashing into it, and to alter the trajectory of your fall to ensure a softer landing. It's highly effective on both counts, though on the latter, the new trajectory isn't exactly the most solid of choices. <laughs> I'm feeling cold, but I'm alive. Thanks to that lake. <laughs> like a wake up call falling off a building and splashing in an icy lake, huh? Nice. You're lucky I happened to be walking by and spotted you. Real lucky. 
Suspiciously good timing, though. Were you watching me all along? <laughs> of course not. I'm far too busy to be spying on anyone. You watch Mr. Sanayu closely as he says this, but his smile shows no sign of any nervousness or unease on his part. Uh, he just happened to be looking up toward the roof and was close enough to catch you. What were you doing up there anyway? Are you looking for something? Well, I was looking for you, actually. Me? <laughs> oh, I bet I know what this is all about. It has to be. You are planning to confess your love for me, weren't you? <laughs> Definitely not. Well, yes, but... Wait a minute, no! Spot on, you dear sweet man. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I didn't expect you to respond to that, much less affirmatively. You do have a cute side to you, you know, that Arathen. Let's say you come by to my office sometime, and I'll show you my secret manuscript. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I just can't resist teasing my students from time to time. I love that look of surprise. Anyway, what is it you wanted to ask me? Ask away. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. Hmm. Hmm? Who are you really? What are you hiding? Tell me everything you know. All of it. I'm sorry. What? Hmm. <laughs> oh. These lazy, hazy, crazy days, yeah. So peaceful. Ah! <laughs> what? There am I. What's <laughs> that? Ah, once you're leaked, I'm so glad you're awake. Felicine and Sasagua. Finally up, Guildmaster. Good, good. There's no need for alarm, Maya. Yeah? You're in my safe house. Your safe house? Why would I? Wait. I remember now. I got caught up in the tycoon's revolt. Oh, yeah. It seemed to happen all at once. Suddenly, companies and assets owned by the Lopongi tycoons all went bankrupt. Fortunes were ruined in an instant. The affected parties began frantically searching for some third-party attack to blame for this financial firebomb. But there was no evidence to suggest any foul play from outside sources. So of course, the next place they looked was within. The spark that set the place ablaze, however, was a claim made that the tycoon's private transaction details must have been leaked by someone. The seeds of suspicion had been sown, and they were burned fruit fast. Everything began to crumble as distrust mounted. Before anyone could stop it, violence among the different divisions broke out, and the tycoons were thrust into a veritable civil war. So yeah, I used my teleportation to bring you here. He nods as Sasago recounts the course of events, his own recollection of the day returning to him. <laughs> Did he pass out? The sound of Melusine preparing dinner are faintly audible in the background. I see. And he brought Melusine. And he brought Melusine. And he brought Melusine as well. I really can't thank you enough, Sasagua. No worries. We're all on this skill together, yeah? We are. Which hurts my heart even more to think about. Leek cannot help but reflect upon the discord he orchestrated within the Tycoons before. It wasn't that long ago he conspired to pit Ophion, Halcomen, and Lucifuge against one another. By manipulating information over time, fomenting conflict, and carefully controlling the state of mind of each involved party, he successfully achieved what he'd set out to do. I've always prided myself on being second to none when it comes to psychological warfare. 
But even I couldn't have generated a more perfect storm than this. It spread through every part of the guild far too quickly. It was as though they were made to unquestionably believe with absolute conviction that a traitor was in their midst. How could anyone manipulate the rulers of the Rapongi so thoroughly and completely? Uh, my head. He groans and palms the bandages melting wrapped on his head. Best not to let your worries get the better of you, yeah? You're just gonna, like, pop open those wounds if you do. Yeah, so it would seem. Perhaps I should try and rest and recover for the moment. You're welcome to laze about with me. Lazy, crazy, hazy mazy days are my specialty. I've turned this place into the ultimate couch potato bunker. There are more ways to waste time in here than stars in the sky. They are... Yeah, speaking of, what have you been looking at on your phone this whole time? Oh, I'm just watching a, a video from this new streamer my gaming buddy told me about in our last chat. It's pretty exciting. If you join their membership, you get access to some secret videos. Their popularity has exploded recently. You wanna watch too? Hashtag the dream. Hmm, streaming videos, you say? Hmm. Yep. The title is like, can I guess what my viewers are thinking? Or fortune telling, actually guaranteed. That kind of thing. Guess you could call him a stage mentalist. Clickbait and grandiose claims. <laughs> Some of the oldest tricks in the book. This person is clearly a scam artist. He smiles with a hint of self-deprecation. Accuracy guaranteed. Nothing in this world is guaranteed. If those claims are true, then the person making them would have to be omniscient. But why would such a being need to stream videos online? The only possible answer is to manipulate a wider audience. They take advantage of the insecurity and distrust inherent in us for their own gain. Leet peers with casual skepticism at the screen Sasago presents. Hmm? Oh, see? You're interested, aren't you? No, it's not that. I just think I've met this particular streamer somewhere before. Oh, it's Masanori. I was expecting Tindalos, but this is a... I don't think he's released really yet at this point. As I recall, I was on my way back from Kuniyoshi's award ceremony. I guess uh, Kuniyoshi is now canonically in main quest now. Leek recounts the events revolving around a friend of, of his from the Art Academy. I think I took a little detour at one point. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. It was in Akihabara. After thoroughly drying your clothes, you and Mr. Sandoyu leave the night duty room and walk outside to let the cool breeze of the nightcap off this harrowing day. You know, if we're being honest with one another, I should, you know. I'm not exactly from Tokyo. Oh? He's from outside? Wait, is he from a different world? Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was more interesting as in being outside of uh, Tokyo but in Earth. What do you believe me if I told you I was an agent of darkness sent here to look after you? I believe you if it were true. <laughs> yeah! Ah, oh, come on, be a sport. He can trust me. Honest. Really? I don't know what to tell you. Or rather, I don't know how much to tell you. Can't tell you everything. I know you want me to, but... I mean, if you're the one being put on the spot here, could you? Fair point. Still, I would tell you absolutely everything. <laughs> You're a cheeky one. If you make an offer like that, though, I'm gonna have to take you up on it. Don't come crying to me about how fair it is when I do. You got that? I think the problem here is that you're holding me up to the bar set for you by that former teacher. That man became your guardian. He was like family to you. But then all of a sudden, he was gone. Surely there must be a part of you feeling betrayed by the man you trusted. And then, in the middle of all that grieving, some weirdo named Sandyu comes strolling in. Am I right? 
I'll admit that's it. I'll bet you're testing the waters with me. See if I'll really be able to fill his boots. That's not it at all. <laughs> Don't try to deny it. I can see right through kids like you at any day of the week. Mr. Sanda, you gazes deep into your eyes. He really was someone special to you, huh? Well, I guess I can relate. Sandyu's eyes glaze over as he mutters, memories clearly rushing to the forefront of his mind. Oh my god, this is coming! I can't believe Goemon exists in the main quest. Master? Master Sandyu! Um, Mr. Sandy, you? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. But hey, Arthur. Hearts and minds do change sometimes, for better or for worse. Even I'm no exception to that. For example, I might tell you I'm never gonna let you down or run around and desert you. But never is a strong word. The future is uncertain. And people do change over time. You can't escape that. So, hypothetically speaking, let's say you hurt something or someone I love. Am I still supposed to honor what I said? Does it preclude me from hating you just because I said I'd never tell a lie and hurt you? That sounds oddly specific. <laughs> Don't you worry your sassy little head. That's purely hypothetical. What I'm trying to say is, a job isn't something for you to put your face in. My job is to do what's asked of me when it's needed. That's it. Putting your face in me just because I'm a teacher and you're my student is pretty foolish if you ask me. None of us know what's coming down the line, so take my advice. If you can't make heads or tails of something, that's okay. Just accept that it as a mystery and treat it accordingly. So what you're saying is... I feel like I've been deceived. Are you admitting to being shady? <laughs> well, I suppose we adults do take the prize when it comes to being shifty, shady, and deceptive. Anyway, let's just call that food for thought. I think it's about time you go home. I've got a lot of work to catch up on. Somebody breaks away from you, giving you a quick wave as he forcefully distances himself from the conversation. Hey, wait. Hmm? What? Did you have something else to talk about? Uh... Sorry, for so vapid. You can go. <laughs> what a cheeky little... Hmm? Sandeyu's hovial laugh and carefree demeanor quickly give way to a slightly puzzled expression as he lifts his head a bit, noticing something in the distance. Uh, that must be from the student dorms. Looks like it's begun. The attack comes swiftly and without warning. It's him! Don't let him get away! <laughs> What's going on? Let's talk this over! Hello? Shuichi? I've arrived at the dormitory. Excellent. Now listen closely, Shiro. No matter what, you need to get Arathan out of there. Fast. <laughs> Wait, Shuichi. I still don't know what's happening. Yeah. Shuichi? I'm afraid I don't know either, which is why you just need to evacuate right now. 
If possible, I recommend avoiding all contact within the guild, too. Best course of action would be to disguise yourselves, cut off all communication, and lie low for the time being. Even while giving this advice, Shuichi can't help but think to himself how exactly it is that they could do that. That video is going viral at an alarming rate. It's already got several hundred thousand? No, several million views. Digital copies aren't limited by the confines of the physical world, so there's no telling how far and wide it may be seen. The potential for its spread is nearly infinite. It's easy to understand why Belor of the Warmongers slaughtered friends and foes alike. There was simply no other option, not when dealing with the invaders. Your guildmaster has entered the public consciousness now as of Tokyo's most wanted. You never know where an enemy may be lurking, nor when or where an attack will come from. It's so frustrating to be the only ones who don't know the layout of the game board. It's like playing a game of checkers while wearing a blindfold, except your opponent is playing chess. I really didn't want to say this. I really didn't want to use this word. But I'm afraid this game... Shuichi throws his head back and looks up at the ceiling before reluctantly conceding that this game is unwinnable. <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves another apocalypse!